we got one other topic here around the National Football League. ton of controversy, and it looks like it's coming to a head. Yeah, I, I'm fascinated by this story because there's a lot of, you know, behind the curtain stuff that's going on with the commanders that is distasteful. We talked about Snyder's history in Washington and how he's just totally screwed it up. What can Roger Goodell do to kind of straighten this guy out? I don't know if it's just Goodell, but the owners on Wednesday night put Daniel Snyder's ownership of the Washington commanders on the agenda at the owners meeting in two weeks. Big issue because there's been an undercurrent of conversation that they're going to try to bring this to a vote to remove him as the owner of the team. Uh, you've got the two toxic workplace culture investigations that have gone on. The league has never, ever revealed any details on what's been found out. That, to me, is a dent in the NFL shield. Sure. Lack of honesty, lack of transparency. You got that. You got the major minority owner lawsuits against Daniel Snyder. You got the revelation that he had to pay $1.6 million to a female employee for a sexual assault case that he himself was involved in. That was covered up for an extended period of time until the Washington Post finally dug that story up. Check mark for American journalism. That's why we need newspapers to continue to operate the way they operate. And now you add in the story that just broke this week, the Washington Post reporting uh, that Daniel Snyder obtained illegally a $55 million loan letter of credit from Bank of America without informing his board of directors and, and without informing the National Football League. Wow. How this guy can be allowed to still be a partner and in business with them with all this junk that's gone around since he's owned the franchise is beyond me. This is not a guy making bad football decisions. This sure looks and sounds and reads and testified he's a bad person. Yeah. I, I mean, it's one thing to not tell the NFL you took out, you know, a huge loan, but it's a whole other thing to not tell your own board of directors. You're, you know, they're essentially the shareholders in your company that you're going into debt. Um, that's a fascinating move there. Now, I, you know, I just remember the days of, I mean, what was the longtime family that owned the Redskins back in the day? Well, the Marshall family. Well, well there was another family, wasn't there? The back when the Joe Gibbs Oh, era. Jack, Jack Kent Cook. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so it, there's just a really interesting history with that franchise in Washington. It's our nation's capital, you know, for heaven's sake. I mean, let's, let's get these guys straightened out and so they can represent, you know, Washington, D.C. Amazing. Uh, I would think we might get to the first week of April during our podcast, and he may have been voted out by his fellow owners. And the league has done this prior. The league, the league voted out uh, the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles because of a gambling debt and gambling addiction. The mm -hmm. league voted out or actually forced the sale, blacklisted Eddie DeBartolo Jr., who had done oh, yeah. legendary things for the 49ers, but yet he was involved with bribery and graft and corruption with governmental people in the state of Louisiana. So there is a precedent to force these guys out who are bad citizens. This, to me, looks like a bad citizen. On we go. Boy.